So welcome. Um, good evening. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the 21st annual Hesburgh Lecture in Ethics and Public Policy at the Kroc Institute for International Peace Studies. Each year, the Kroc, uh, Kroc Institute director, in this case, um, Ruth Abbey, um, invites a distinguished scholar, policymaker, or peace advocate to deliver a major lecture on an issue related to ethics and public policy in the context of peace and justice. The series was established by the Kroc Institute in 1995 to honor the late and very great Reverend Theodore M. Hesburgh, the former president of Notre Dame and the founder of the Kroc Institute. Now, as I think uh, probably everybody here knows, Father Ted sadly passed away last February. And I think this is the first lecture, well, this is the first lecture since his death, and I think it's the third lecture, only the third in which he was not actually physically present in the audience. Um, so I think he deserves a special remembrance today. Father Ted, as he was affectionately known, was a global champion of peace and justice, a dedicated citizen of the world, and an advisor to presidents and popes. This yearly occasion to reflect on the major political and ethical dilemmas of the day held a special place in his heart. So this year, we are deeply honored to welcome the renowned social movement scholar, Sidney Tarot, to engage with us on these issues. So before I start in on the long list of accomplishments, which will no doubt embarrass Sid, um, a memory. I have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I never directly studied with Sid. I got to know his work through my dissertation supervisor, Charles Tilley, historical sociologist, and Sid's longtime collaborator and close friend. I first met Sid um, in 1996, freshly back from my dissertation field work in Brazil, when I was invited to one of the conversations at the Center for Advanced Studies in Palo Alto, in which Taro, Tilly, and partner in crime, Doug McAdam, held a series of scholarly consultations over the ideas that would become the pivotal 2001 work, Dynamics of Contention. Now, I was an over-eager grad student in love with the complexities of my own research and not always as skilled in communicating the importance or even the central points of that work um, to others. I remember that Sid was inquisitive and kind um, um, as I explained my project to him, if a little perplexed. So we met again four years later at a conference on networks and social movements in beautiful Loch Lomond in Scotland, as you just reminded me of. Um, now I was a now assistant professor at Rutgers. Um, I talked the audience through a series of intricate network diagrams of student participation in the 1992 impeachment movement in Brazil. Sid once again listened intently. He didn't offer a lot of commentary on the spot, but he emailed me some comments later in which he told me, to paraphrase the emperor to Mozart, too many words. <laughs> so I couldn't say that I was exactly crushed, but I was chastened. And I tried to follow his advice uh, of one paper, one idea. Um, I must have at least approximated that very demanding and difficult standard, since after the, the paper was finally published, um, he sent me another somewhat more conciliatory email with the title line, Orchids. So there you have Sid. Curious, discerning, clear-headed, demanding, generous, ki and kind as generations of students and colleagues have experienced their interactions with him. So in recent years, Sid and I have bonded over our shared love and appreciation for my mentor and his collaborator, Charles Tilly. In different ways, uh, Sid and I traversed the relational turn uh, together with Tilly during our close association with him in the 1990s, although we were very different points in our careers, but uh, we're part of that conversation. But that is the topic for Sid's second lecture at Notre Dame on Saturday when he will be awarded the John D. McCarthy Award for Lifetime Achievement in the Scholarship of Social Movements. So that seems like a good place to segue into the formal stuff. So Sidney Tarot, is currently the Emeritus Maxwell M. Upson Professor of Government at Cornell University. He got his BA from Syracuse, an MA from Columbia, and his PhD from UC Berkeley. He has published at least nine single authored books and at least 13 co-authored or co-edited volumes. It's honestly hard to keep count as he continues to produce these at a recent rate of about one a year. Sid's early work centered around a variety of interests, including a study of Italian communism, 
comparative communisms in Europe and the Italian protest cycle of the 1960s and 1970s, early, the late 1960s and early 70s. This work contributed to his pivotal theorization of cycles of protest, still a critical analytical tool in the arsenal of social, social movement analysis. He has written important programmatic statements on the political process approach in social movement analysis, including power in movement, now in its third, third, fourth um, edition. I teach it regularly, just finished up a class. I'm discussing um, 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 the book um, just yesterday. Um, he also um, uh, collaborated with, teamed up, again, with, teamed up with Tilly and McAdam in what I've, I've already mentioned, Dynamics of Contention, in which uh, they recast political process terms in more relational and structural, uh, recast a very kind of structurally oriented political process theory in more relational and processual terms. He's written several books and many articles addressing transnational contention and global activism. And he's recently ventured even farther from his structuralist roots into the domain of culture and language in his 2013 book on the language of contention. And he's turned to the question of states and political contention in two recent books um, from Cambridge, Strangers at the Gates, States and Movements in Contentious Politics, and most recently, War, States and Contention, a historical com uh, comparative study, which he will address um, in his talk uh, today. Um, the list of honors and awards is, again, too lengthy to cite. I'll just note that he was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1992. He won the annual award for the best book from the Collective uh, Action and Social Movement section of the American Sociological Association, also in 92. He's been funded by the Guggenheim Foundation, the National Science Foundation, the NEH, the Mellon Foundation, the German Marshall Fund, the Ford Foundation, and the Fulbright Foundation. I probably missed a few in there. He's been a fellow of the, at the Center for Advanced Studies, um, and, uh, the Russell Sage Foundation, the Robert Schumann Center, um, Advanced Study Institute. He's held many offices in the American Political Science Association, so he's, he's kind of straddling political science and um, sociology, um, including program chair and president of the comparative politics section. So as you see, and as I'm sure he will tell me, I'm erring once again in giving you too many words. Um, so I guess this is a lesson that I am still learning. So without further ado, I give to you Sidney Terrell. I just have one word to say, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you, thanks to Ruth Abbey and to uh, Ann Royden and to all the uh, staff and faculty of the Kroc Institute for this great honor, um, which I don't think I deserve, but uh, I'll do my best to stand up to the high standards of my many pre predecessors standing at this rostrum. It's also a very important week in the history of this country. And it's fitting, I think, that I should come here to talk about the peace movement, because this was the week 40 years ago when our country ended its most inglorious war, the war in Vietnam. And here, too, the Kroc Institute is important because it is co-sponsoring a very important conference in Washington now <coughs> on the Vietnam War. David uh, Courtright, who could not be here today because he's involved in that conference. And I urge you to pay attention to the results of the conference, some of which have already <coughs> been published, and many of which will appear soon. Coming to Notre Dame to talk about the peace movement carries a certain burden for somebody like me. I grew up in a Catholic neighborhood of Brooklyn, and I became politically active during the Vietnam War. But that's not the only reason I'm chastened to be here. It's because I'm speaking at the most distinguished peace studies center in the country, the Kroc Institute. And because I speak in the shadow of that great Catholic advocate for peace and against nuclear armament, I refer, of course, to your late president, 
Theodore Hesburgh. Father Ted, as you may know, had first supported the Vietnam War, but he eventually turned away from it. Notre Dame students had a lot to do with that conversion. The late 60s, he observed, was possibly the first time in history when the young educated their elders in an essentially moral national concern. I'd like to dedicate this lecture to Father Ted. Due to his leadership, Notre Dame was one of the few major universities that maintained a climate of something like civility during a most uncivil period. Hesburgh had little patience with the student radicals. But the story of his conversion teaches us a lesson, and that is that an effective peace movement 